Hello there and welcome to the News at 4 with me, Sabena Izuku. The Senate has suspended its plan to override President Goodluck Jonathan's veto on the Constitution Amendment Bill. This is to enable the federal lawmakers challenge the Supreme Court's power to stop them from taking further legislative actions on the bill. However, the Senate leader, Victor Indoma Egba, said at a news conference after the preliminary that the National Assembly decided to toe the path of legality. It's insisted that, contrary to the positions of the president, both the chambers of the legislatures followed the necessary due process in the course of the three-year exercise. Legal practitioners have advised the National Assembly to respect the law to avert crisis on the purported Constitution Amendment. This is on the backdrop of the National Assembly reported vow to override the president and the Supreme Court. Uluwashi Adigoki has the rest of the story. The federal government had earlier instituted a suit at the Supreme Court to nullify the proposed amendments to the 1999 Constitution. President Jonathan had withheld his assent to the amendment to some sections of the document sent to him by the National Assembly. He faulted some of the amendments which gives executive powers and duties to the legislature and judiciary. The complaint that actually, you know, uh, I, I, I say I, that may deserve some attention is the issue of amendment of the amending section. You know, there is a section that amends the constitution with which you can, I think, section 9. That particular section was amended, and then uh, it requires a special uh, requisite number uh, for it to be passed into law. The upper chamber of the National Assembly some days back had vowed to override the president and Supreme Court, claiming that the court does not have the powers to prevent it from conducting its legislative duties. It's an unnecessary controversy unnecessary crisis involving now the three arms of government. Uh, I'm aware that the House can override the veto power of the President. Uh, I'm not aware whether the House can override uh, the, the judgment or the ruling of the Supreme Court or any court in the land. Now, the Supreme Court led by Justice Mahmoud Mohammed had fixed June 18 for further hearing on the case on a date the tenure of the current Assembly would have ended. If there's any order of the court that have been validly granted, the order of the court must be obeyed. And there is a serious consequence for disobedience of court order. So much money has been wasted uh, in trying to amend this particular constitution, almost in the billions, and time also wasted. The Supreme Court should have been interested in having this matter resolved within the lifespan of this administration. The process of amending the constitution still hang in the balance. Time will tell how the incoming administration will handle the issue. Uluwashi Yadigoki, Court TV News, Lagos. President-elect Mohamedou Buhari has denied endorsing any individual for Senate presidency or any position in the Senate. He insists that he will not interfere with the process of selecting principal leaders in both chambers of National Assembly. In a statement released in Abuja on Wednesday, General Buhari brushed off insinuations in the media that he was in support of a particular senator's emergence as leader or that he belonged to any camp pushing for the emergence of a leader from a particular part of the country. The president-elect added that the insinuations were probably born out of people's expectation based on the way things had happened in the past, but reminding Nigerians that change had truly come. And away from that, the House of Representatives on Tuesday consider a report from the Committee on Health and Federal Road Safety Commission on a bill for an act to provide for compensation of victims of road accidents. The committee report was presented by Indudi Elumelu, representing Aniocha Oshimili, Federal Constituency of Delta State, and is aimed at making the Road Safety Commission to establish an accident victim compensation fund. By Samuel Yesmore. Attendance at plenary on Tuesday was low, but this did not deter the House members from carrying out their legislative duties. In the absence of major issues, Deputy Speaker of the House, Emekai Hedioha, called for the presentation and considerations of reports. The first set of reports to be laid for consideration were from the Committee on Health, Joint Committee on Health and Justice, and the Committee on Health and Federal Road Safety Commission. I also move that this House do receive a report of the Committee on Health 
and Justice on a B for an R to establish the National Postgraduate College of Medical Laboratory Science and for other matters connected therewith. I also move that this House do receive a report of the Committee on Health on Federal Road Safety Commission on a bill for an act to provide compensation of victims of road accident and to establish the Road Accident Victims Compensation Commission and for other matters related. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Melu, please proceed and lay the reports. the House to amend the Tertiary Education Trust Fund Act of 2011 to enable the Nigerian Law School to benefit from the fund. This, like you rightly said, sir, is a very important matter. If you are to get this document today and expect you to make any reasonable input, and we are saying that we are coming uh, to discuss it tomorrow, I think we, 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 we that it will not be enough for us. After consideration and presentation of reports, the House went into Committee of the Whole for further legislative inputs on some bills of national importance. Pyre Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. The Senate has passed an anti-tobacco bill which primarily seeks to shield not smokers but it also has provisions that will ultimately protect farmers and the local tobacco industry. The bill was passed after the Senate Committee on Health presented a bulky report outlining penalties for smoking in public places and the sale of tobacco products into the mines. A bill for an act to repeal the Tobacco Control Act 1990, Cap T76, Laws of the Federation, and deny the National Tobacco Control Bill 2015 to provide for the regulation and control of the production, manufacture, sell, advertising, promotion and sponsorship of tobacco products in Nigeria, and for that matter, dated there to 2015, read the third time and passed. This is the climax of a process that began about a year ago with an executive bill that prescribes a six-month jail term for smoking in public places. There was also a public member bill sponsored by Senator Ifan Yokoa and 10 members of the Senate Committee on Health. The two bills were consolidated and after a debate that saw the Senate divided on the possibility of an outright ban on smoking, a public hearing was called for input from the various vested interests. Six months after the hearing, the committee turned in a report which members say took health and economic issues into consideration. In the report presented by Senator Chris Ngige, the committee noted that as much as smokers have a lifestyle choice, they should be stopped from harming non-smokers. But there was also a dose of reality as the committee admitted that a total ban on tobacco product would have adverse effects on farmers and the local industry. The bill was passed easily with Deputy Senate President Ike Kweromadu insisting that non-smokers have a right to be protected. For us as a Senate, the danger associated with smoking cannot be overemphasized. And the tragedy here is that those at risk are not just who smoke, but those around them, their loved ones, their neighbors and their friends. He also has some comforting words for the local tobacco industry and others benefiting from the tobacco trade. So it is important that we regulate the smoking and other matters related with the tobacco manufacturing and sell. This we have done today in order to protect our people from the harmful effect of smoking. So I believe that the society, especially those whose business involves uh, production and sale of tobacco will understand our concern for the health of our people. So once more, I'd like to congratulate you and believe that the law enforcement agencies will take appropriate action to enforce this very important legislation. The House of Representatives is expected to tow a similar path after which both chambers would harmonize their positions into a single document that would be sent for the President's assent. But if President Jonathan fails to sign the bill into law, the process would have to begin all over again. 
Labour activists have barricaded the entrance of the National Identity Management Commission in Abuja in protest of the alleged plan to sack 1,000 staff of the government agency. Many of the protesters are civil rights activists and they say the solidarity protest is because the workers um, to be affected are members of the Nigerian Labour Congress. Speaking through their spokesman, they say will not be in a hurry to leave the barricade until something is done to reverse the sack of the affected staff. You can see that this protest is a national one. National Identity Management Commission is having problem. By virtue of our work, an injury to one is injury to all. Yes. It is on that note all agencies across Abuja we gather here today to safeguard the interests of our members here. The NIMSI management who just describe them in a very simple term. They are very ungodly. Recently, there was a problem. They accused the federal civil staff, self, the federal civil service staff, that there was a fraud, uh, that there was a, that there was a fraud, there was forgery of certificates of promotion letters given by the federal civil service. Apart from that, apart from that. They said they will sack the federal civil service uh, staff of 1,000 in NIMSI. They now placed us on disciplinary action. I personally, Mwabaji Ugoma Regina, I am affected. Top management of National Identity Management Commission, NIMC, set to uh, brief press on the ongoing protests by some staff of the NIMC over retrenchment. The NIMC management said 406 staffs has falsified documents by the association accused management of embezzling 30 billion naira and operations of unfair labor practices, especially against pregnant women. Protesters also accuse NIMC uh, of spending 20 billion in the last five years on ID cards and added that the commission has not produced up to a million cards, contrary to claims by the management. Away from that, the police council has confirmed Solomon Arase as substantive and the uh, inspector general of police. The council, headed by President Gilok Jonathan, took the decision on Tuesday with relevant members in attendance. Speaking to State House correspondent after the meeting, the new police chief assured Nigerians of police commitment to ensuring peace and security across the country. I have just been confirmed. <laughs> Congratulations. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, what are other issues were discussed at the council meeting, please? Well, we talked about uh, the security challenges we are having and uh, our uh, strategic responses to, you know, addressing those challenges. Those are part of the things that we discussed. And uh, I can assure Nigerians that we are going to, you know, address those issues, you know. Uh, there is no society that is actually crime free, you know. Um, but. We are trying to ensure that it is within tolerable, you know, levels, and that is exactly what we are going to do. It's not, it's not as bad as uh, the public perception in there. And uh, besides that, you said what I want to tell my men: their welfare will be, you know, one of my cardinal responsibilities. And you know, you don't uh, motivate a workforce except their welfare becomes paramount in your. So I'm going to ensure that you know their welfare becomes uh, is put in the front burner. To Nigerians, I know the expectations are high. But I can assure them that no Nigerian will suffer any injustice by my inaction or my action. Yeah, like that year, told you later on, issues that border on national security were discussed, how to ensure that Nigerians live in peace, how to ensure that securities are assured, how to ensure that property, their lots of properties are adequately protected. With that, a new idea was brought on board to see if the policies and the programs put in place and permitted by him. 
Supreme Court Judge, um, I beg your pardon, President Kulu Jonathan has approved the appointment of Justice Amiru Sanusi as uh, Justice of the Supreme Court. Spokesman for the National Judicial Council, Soju Oye, disclosed this in a statement and the new Supreme Court judge is to be sworn in on Thursday. His appointment brings to the number 18 of the Justice of Nigeria Apex Court. Inspector General of uh, Police, Solomon Arase, has dispatched a special track squad to tackle cultism, kidnapping, and other vices in Edo State within 24 hours of his confirmation as a sensitive police helmsman. The squad is headed by the Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of the Federal Special Anti Robbery Squad. A police statement indicated that the new squad will draw operators from the police mobile force, criminal intelligence and investigation department, explosives ordinance department and the state anti-robbery sections. Police spokesman Emmanuel Juku says the step taken by the IG is in line with the commitment to ensure the protection of life and property as well as build a people-oriented police force. Away from that, the call for immediate review of high cost of running government in the country continues to generate reactions. Some see it as a ploy by the outgoing government to create pitfalls for the new government. Others are of the opinion that it is a necessary step uh, that will ensure even development in the nation. And in this report, Uluwashi Adegoke engages an economist on budgeting. Every establishment needs a budget to guide its mission. A budget is a financial document or plan prepared and used to project future income and expenses. It is made and approved in advance for the year in which it is to be used or implemented. Such a document is expected to have certain features in order to achieve definite set goals and objectives. However, in the Nigerian experience, allowances are credible to government functionaries in different arms of government as influence expenditure in questionable ways over the years. What we realize, the revenue, we have not been able to save or uh, invest. Most of it has been spent, either our recurrent expenditure, a privilege, mismanagement. And that's why we are where we are today. Most of the revenue brought in um, were invested in recurrent expedition for paying salaries and uh, wish we eventually we not had value to the economy. The National Assembly has passed Nigeria's 2015 budget five months into the year, but it has not yet come into effect. The president is yet to sign it into law. This in its own way raises a question of whether or not there is a need to review allowances agreeable to government functionaries as a pitfall for the incoming administration. But I believe very strongly that, that somebody who has been there before, uh, coming back with a body language of zero tolerance to corruption, you'll be able to gather a crack team. We have a lot of waste outside there. Some of the features of a budget are accurate income projections, enough categories to give you a meaningful picture of where money goes, cost cutting mechanism, and most importantly, a positive attitude. Could these be pointers to a productive budget for national development? The amount must not be spent in the current expedition. It must not be consumed. It must be, it must be used to develop infrastructure. Your greatest resource, the greatest resource of any company or any, or any country, are actually the people. Nigerians hope with the coming of the new administration come May 29, every citizen will feel the development in every part of the country. Uluwashe Yadibuki, Court TV News, Lagos. You're watching Court TV News on the R at 4. We'll take a short break and when we return, the news continues. Just stay with us. One continent, 54 countries, over 2,000 languages, but united in similar interests. As news breaks, we give you in-depth analysis around Africa every Monday on Core TV News. Welcome back to the news. For more information, you can reach us on any other social media platform, and that's on facebook.com forward slash Core TV News. And on our Twitter handle, at Court TV News NG. For news updates and other programs, you can stream us live on youtube.com forward slash Court TV Lipspice and the news. 
The Oshun state government has debunked allegations claiming that a son of the governor, Rafareg Wishola Kabil, Arek Wishola was arrested at the Maritala Mohammed uh, Airport, International Airport on the 12th of May 2015 with a large sum of money in hard currencies. The allegation was debunked by the State Director Bureau of Communications and Strategy. He went to claim the authors of the wicked and malicious lie uh, doggedly pursuing the agenda by engaging in an aggressive push for the falsehood to reach a larger population, especially using the social media. The statement claims the younger Arab Bashala neither traveled anywhere nor had any encounter with any security personnel on the said day. Okalawo claims the evil minds at work are out to drag an innocent young man's name into this dirt in order to get at his father, saying Arab Bashala has maintained a life of a moderate family man with a set of highly disciplined children who cannot be found wanting on issues of morals and societal values. Okolawan further advised members of the public to dismiss the allegations because it is just another handiwork of mischievous minds. The All Progressive Congress has called on security agencies and the telecommunications service providers to help fetch out those seeking to defraud Nigerians by asking them to uh, apply for federal appointments in the income and APC of federal government through a non existent APC screening committee. The party made this call in a statement issued by the National Publicity Secretary Lai Mohammed in Abuja. The party insists that the call has become necessary as the scammers had persisted in their fraudulent ways despite previous warnings by the party for them to desist. The telephone number and email address as disclosed in the statement are 081074-00745, APC Screening Committee at gmail.com. And the front, Dr. Favor Idiodi, who is supposedly the Screening Committee Secretary. APC repeated its earlier warning contained in a statement on the 21st of April 2015, where it warned Nigerians to beware of such fraudulent claims. It said the party had not set up any committee to which Nigerians should submit their CVs for screening and possible federal appointments. PDP National Publicity Secretary Olisa Metu has accused the All Progressive Congress of trying to manipulate tribunal processes in Riva, Delta and Akwaibon State. Metu made his allegations while addressing a news conference in Abuja as he insists members of the party are trying to keep terms with their first defeat after 16 years in power. According to him, while the APC may not be held responsible for the crisis in the PDP, including the recent crisis in Lagos State, he alleged that the APC is adopting strategies to destabilize the PDP and introduce a one-party system in the country. The PDP lost the presidential elections for the first time in 16 years. The party also lost the majority in the red and green chambers of the National Assembly. Away from that, after the March 28th and the April 11 presidential and governorship elections, drama seems to be evolving daily in the PDP camp, both at the national and the state levels. The latest drama is the purported impeachment of the Lagos PDP chairman, Tunji Shele, on Monday. Uluwashi Adigoke has more. On May 11, 2015, news of the removal of the Lagos PDP chairman filtered in. The Secretariat was under lock and key with the presence of security operatives on guard. The impeachment drama was attributed to the fallout of the party's primaries, where a particular group within the Lagos PDP camp had conspired to change the structure of the party. They tried to divide the party along personality lines. But thank God, I hired all the leaders and elders behind me. The ESCO is made up of 49 members and I control the majority at all times. Chairman maintains he remains the party chairman until the next ESCO has in office. It is unfortunate that the few incarcerated members with the arrowhead, Kamal Olonje and Wahab Owoko Niro eventually struck. I'm in the office now. I'm in control. I'm in charge. The party says they do not regret having Jimmy Agbaje as the party's governorship flag bearer, maintaining that he gave the APC a keen competition in the last election. They, however, assured that disciplinary action 
will be taken against the party offenders. Uluwashi Yadigoke, Court TV News, Lagos. The crisis currently ravaging the People's Democratic Party is visiting the already troubled Ekito State chapter as the state's working committee sacks Ido Wufalaye and elects Olatunde Olatunde as the new acting chairman. Ido Wufalaye has, however, denied his removal, accusing the other factions of asking for a huge sum of money. The Olatunde led faction, however, insists that Falaye stepped down for literally after presenting to him glaring facts that nullifies him as the party leader. Our correspondent Rashid Rashid has more. The Ekiti State chapter of the PDP is no doubt in troubled waters as two factions have emerged following the removal of the SY chairman Ido Falaye, replaced by Olatunde Olatunde. While Olatunde claims that Falaye is not a PDP member, thus resulting in his voluntary step down, Falaye insists he remains the state chairman. We offended our constitution by appointing two powerful state working committee from the same ward. We alerted him. He also uh, regretted it. That that particular one was why he stepped aside. You know, till now, his name is not in the party register. State Working Committee requested for payment of the honorarium, which I don't have such power to pay a good sum of money. And I cannot drag my name into the mud. I told them that they should hold on till when we will get approval. The legal advisor of the party, apparently on the side of the embattled chairman, cites legal implication, while the Olatunde led faction reiterates that the chairman's removal is the overall consensus of the state working committee. If we are going to have a meeting of the party, the chairman is supposed to call the meeting through the secretary, and all members of the executive will be notified. I am a member of the executive, I am a member of the state working committee. I am not and I'm not aware of any meeting. Incidentally, I have the attendance here, which he himself signed. We have uh, 11 out of 14 SWC. Out of uh, 13 assistant officers, 11 also signed. We have 22 over 29. The party secretary, Tokbe Aluko, was last week touted for suspension, but it is the chairman that has now been sacked, a signal that the PDP is now heading for the rocks, even as the impeachment act still hangs on the governor, Ayodele Fayoshi, as the party in the Kiti state now remains factionalized. Rashid Rashid, Kotiv News, Adoikiti. The trial of Aminu Oguche, the alleged mastermind of the 2014 Yang Bus terminal bombing, and five other of the Federal High Court Abuja, has been stalled due to the absence of the prosecution witnesses. The court has slated the 12th of May for proper trial of the suspect after several adjournments, but has now fixed May 19 and 20 prosecution counsel. Mohammed Diri had told the court that three of the witnesses slated to testify were on an official assignment. Defense counsel Ahmed Raji and five other counsels did not object but demanded a speed trial of the suspects. Went for other official assignments, but one would have thought coming to court to give evidence on a sensitive matter like this. It's a bigger official assignment than, but since what they are talking about borders and security, we need to give them the benefit of doubt. And we are not reading any minutes into it. So we agreed to an adjournment, and the court has um, now adjourned to uh, 19th and 20th of uh, May, which is next week, Tuesday and Wednesday when they are supposed to come with their witnesses. Following the deteriorating security situation in St. Paul's Plato State, the state government has imposed a curfew on seven local government areas between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Information and Communication, C.C. Bello, and a statement listed the affected councils. They include in Bakinladin, uh, Riyom, Jos East, Mangu, Wase, Langtang North and South local government areas. The state emergency management agency was also directed to provide relief materials to internally displaced persons in the affected areas as security agencies have been deployed to ensure compliance and forestall future occurrence in the areas. The citizens of the state are also called upon to be security conscious 
and report any suspicious movement around them, urging them to go about their normal activities. The Poetry Association of Nigeria, Pan in Plato State, has decried the federal government non payment of compensation to farms affected by avian influenza, popularly known as bird flu. While addressing journalists and Jules, the chairman of the association, Jules, uh, John Dassa, claims the non payment of compensations had triggered uh, the spread of the disease. He says that most farmers were yet to believe the government's sincerity and prefer to sell suspected infected birds to marketers at cheaper rates. He claims over 153 farmers in the Plato State have closed down completely because of the disease, but no compensation. As Nigerians prepare for the transition to another administration, Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashalan has identified the rule of law as the bedrock of any country seeking relevance in the Committee of Developed Nations. Fashalan made this assertion while commissioning of a magistrate court in Ogba area of Agege local government area. Abiola Oluwole's report is presented from our studio. The magistrate court dedicated in honor of a former chief judge of the state, Samuel Lori, according to Governor Fashola, is designed to deepen the access of residents to justice. He emphasized that rule of law must be accorded its proper place if Nigeria is ready to take her rightful place in the community of nations. No matter how beautiful the buildings we build, the roads, if we choose to live outside the law, ultimately our society will not progress. So it is important to pay attention to those who have the responsibility to enforce laws, who have the responsibility to administer laws. Appreciating Fashola for his contribution to the state judiciary, Lagos State Chief Judge Olufumi Lyo Atilade promised effective use of the courthouse. Efforts will be intensified with the support of the state government to further enhance the human and technical capacity of our judicial officers magistrates and support staff for optimum service delivery. Our goal to significantly decongest the prisons and cases pending in our courts will be vigorously pursued and achieved. Governor Fashola proceeded to hand over the first phase of Solus Material Recovery Facility at Igondo area of the state. Over 1,000 youths from 19 states of northern Nigeria have converged in Kaduna State for the first ever Northern Youth Summit. The one-day event was put together with support from the Social Culture Group Arawa Consultative Forum. Amina Anebi has more on this report, which is presented from our studio. These young people have gathered in Kaduna for a reason. They are seeking unity among various youth groups in Northern Nigeria. The organizers are happy about the population of young people in the region but also concerned over the figure of out-of-school children. Along with the vision that we must have is the fact that we must begin to see in ourselves the huge potentials that we have got. Statistics have proven to us that more than 50% of those 10.8 million children that are out of school are from within the length and breadth of the 19 northern states. Many of the participants agree that a lot needs to be done to develop the region. They also encourage young Nigerians in northern Nigeria not to relent in fighting for their right to better lives. And all we are saying here is the stronger, if we, if we must be strong, then we must be together. The Adira Consultative Forum have already given the youth their full support. Happy seeing some key people here and people who believe in the north. And I wish the way we, come to, we came together today, I wish we would also work together and make it possible for northern Nigerian youths. This is the only way that can we northern youth can wake up and recognize our potentials. The region's main social cultural group, Iowa Consultative Forum, also had a word of advice for youths from all 19 states. We are seeing the past. We hope to see more. 12 galvanizing northern Nigeria because now the leadership is back to northern Nigeria. We need to carry everybody along. The gathering assured Nigerians that the north will no sooner reactivate its integrated strength. But this, they say, would never be complete if northern youths do not come together 
and work as a team. We'll take another break and when we return this time, it will be time for sports and other stories outside Nigeria. Just stay with us. Women share the most amazing thoughts on national issues. And they do it passionately. For most men that are educated, that are exposed, will not will see nothing to it. The population and the, the level of poverty made me cry. No infrastructural development whatsoever. And you tell me Lagos is working? That was an accident. And it was a one-off thing. Other than that, there has never been any situation in Nigeria where a Nigerian attacked anybody just because of where they came from. Sharing the adorable word of women in politics every week, only on Core TV News. Welcome back. And in sports, the Nigerian Football Federation has affirmed that it will make necessary efforts to ensure that coaching courses are much more regular in the country. In order for the country to boost a, a now of trained coaches within the next couple of years. Nigerian Football Federation First Vice President Barista Sheyi Akiwumi made this pledge on behalf of the Nigerian Football Federation President Amadjo Melvin Penick at the opening ceremony of the CAFC License Coaching Course in Abuja. Over 80 coaches attended the two weeks course holding at the FIFA Technical Center, Package B, of the National Stadium Abuja. For the Super Eagles, coach and ex FIFA Technical Advisor Adibuye Onigminde. One time, Nigerian Football Federation Technical Director Kashimao Laluko, former Eagle coach James Peters, and incoming Nigerian Football Federation Technical Director Shwaib Amodu are among uh, instructors at the program. Coach Manu Ngabar has praised the Flying Eagles in the win and start on a training tour of the journey ahead. 2015 FIFA Under-20 World Cup in New Zealand. The African champions brushed past Hoffenheim Under-23 5-2 on Tuesday as part of the build-up to the Under-20 World Cup, which starts on May 30th. Garba said the team needs to work on the defence by taking on more defensive responsibilities and finishing to be better in front of gold. The Fly Eagles' next game will be on Friday afternoon in Nunberg against the Nunberg under-23s before they play their final warm-up match against Freiburg under-23 team on the 19th of May. Barcelona reached their first Champion League final since 2011 despite Pep Guardiola's Bayern Munich salvaging pride in the return leg in Germany. Trailing 3-0 from the first leg, Bayern revived their hopes through Medhi Benassia early downward heater. Barca leveled when Luis Suarez squared for a tab in uh, from Neymar, who drilled in after the pair combined again. Robert Lewandowski and Thomas Muller both curled in as Bayern um, League One on the five on the night, but Barca still progressed. Manny Fakwai says he is close to making a decision on whether to retire from boxing. The 36-year-old Filipino returned to his home country on Wednesday following defeat by Floyd Mayweather in the World uh, Walter Wade Super Fight on the 2nd of May. Despite a unanimous uh, points defeat in Las Vegas, Fakwai, a six-weight world champion, was welcomed back to the Philippines by fans as he paraded through the streets of capital city, Manila, on the back of a truck. New figures released by American networks Showtime and HBO said five shattered the previous record for total pay uh, per view buys with 4.4 million purchases of the fight in the United States alone. Let's take another break and when we return this time, it will be time for Outside Nigeria. Just stay with us. Every day, every hour, every minute, news break in Nigeria. 
things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, would you, come, would you want to come back as the savior of the world? Again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. And outside Nigeria, the second in command Islamic State ISIS has been killed in a US led coalition airstrike in northern Iraq, Iraqi Ministry of Defense says. Abdul Rahman Mustafa Bohabed, also known as Abu Allah al Afri, was inside a mosque in Tal Afar that was targeted, and he had been meeting dozens of militants who also died in the strike. In recent weeks, there were unconfirmed reports that Afri had taken temporary charges of ISIS operations. The Burundi Army General says President Pierre Nkurunziza has been overthrown amid unrest over his bid to be re-elected for a third term. Major General Godefroid Niyom Barre says uh, a salvation committee had been set up while his level of support is unclear. Thousands of protesting against the president of the capital, Munjumbura, are now reported to be celebrating. President Nkurunziza is currently in Tanzania. President's Twitter site said the coup attempt had failed. Nkuruziza has been meeting other East African leaders to discuss the crisis. His aide dismissed the coup claims as a joke. In a series of Twitter postings, the Burundi presidency at first said the situation was under control and that there was no coup. Then that the attempt to coup had failed. Niyon Barre is in, in a statement read to reporters in a military base said he did not recognize the leadership because the president's bid for a third term violated the constitution. And that's it on the news of four. Do join us at the top of the hour for more and at six for Bloomberg News. I am Sabana Mizuku and thank you very much indeed for watching.